so many beautiful trees. I don't know if I will decide which one to buy this year, but one thing's for sure. We're eating good tonight. Stay tuned to find out what's for dinner. Hey friends, welcome back to Simply Home and Harvest. We are on yet another outing to look at some Christmas things. Today we are at Home Depot. I'm gonna run in here and look at the Christmas trees and take you along, show you some of the decorations here. But that's not going to be all that we do on today's video. We're going to head back home. Tonight for dinner, I'm gonna make a baked ziti. I've actually got to run to Aldi and get some groceries. So just a busy day, but I wanted to stop in here first and take a look at what Home Depot has. I know on my last video, I made a comment that we were going to go to the Home Depot next and look at their Christmas decorations. So let's do that. And before you know it, guys, we will be decorating for Christmas. Like I'll be decorating next week. Um, which is mind blowing. We leave on vacation the following week and I want to come home to a house that's decorated for Christmas because where we are going, they will already have everything decorated for Christmas. Um, all of the events, shows, everything will be Christmas themed. So I don't want to come back to a house that needs to be decorated for Christmas. I want to go ahead and check that off my list. So lots to do, but it's an exciting time, my favorite time. And the weather is absolutely gorgeous today. It's in the 70s, the trees are putting on a show. I tell you what, I love every season, you know, the, what every season brings. Fall is definitely my favorite. I just absolutely love the colors and I'm just in awe of God and his creation when I look around because things are so beautiful. And especially this year, I don't know, it's just been a really pretty fall. So anyway, enough chatting. Let's get in here and see what we can find for Christmas. Right, let me also say this before we head in. There is a tree. I mentioned it to y'all in the last video. I think it was deemed like the viral um, Home Depot tree or the TikTok tree last year. And it's very comparable to like the Balsam Hill trees and it's seven and a half feet. I've already like stalked it on the internet and done a little online research on it, but I am, I'm just torn. I'm debating and it's a lot of money. It's like $349 right now. I'm really debating on whether or not we need to make that purchase this year or let our tree go another year. Um, I just don't know what to do. So maybe y'all can weigh in on it and help me out. Probably by the time you see this, I'll just have had to make a decision, but maybe not. Um, I'll let you vote. If you were, if you've been with me the last couple of years and you know what we go through every year with putting our tree together piece by piece, um, you know, this will be a little bit probably easier of a decision for you to help us make. But the tree we currently have is seven, seven and a half feet. It drops needles like nobody's business. I mean, I sweep up so many needles every year that I can't figure out how the tree still has anything left on it. Um, and you have to put it together. It's an old fashioned tree. It's beautiful though. Once it's up and together, it is beautiful. But some of the limbs are bent. You know, you have to put it down in the hooks and has to color coordinate and make sure you have the same length as you go up to the top. Then you have to fluff all the branches out. Then you have to put the 2000 lights on it and um you know it's just there's a lot involved and i was the research i did on this tree that i'm going to look at the lady says she put together in three and a half minutes and i was like oh my gosh three and a half minutes so anyway let's go check it out but that's what i'm really looking for today um and of course we'll see a lot of other pretty things but that's probably the one thing that i am hoping to purchase this year as far as christmas decor
All right, you guys, just wanted to update you. I did not get a lot of footage in Home Depot because really compared to Lowe's, and if you haven't seen that video, go back and watch that. That's my most recent, just like the, the holiday decorations cannot compare to the ones in Lowe's. Even like the setup in Lowe's, everything about it, I'm telling y'all, it's worth a trip. If your Lowe's is setting up their Christmas display like ours is, it's worth a trip to just go by, get yourself warm, something warm and cozy to drink, and take a few minutes to just walk the aisles of Lowe's. You can do that in Hobby Lobby too. Um, I told the kids, Dad and I are going to have a date night. We're going to go to dinner. We're going to get us some something. Well, he probably wouldn't get a coffee, but I'll get a coffee and we're going to go and we're just going to walk up and down the aisles of Lowe's and see the Christmas decorations, which they thought was so boring. But I think that is a nice and expensive date to have. <laughs> so maybe y'all think that's, that's lame too, but that's why I didn't get a lot of footage of the decorations at Home Depot. But I did get some of the trees. Um, here's what I can tell you. The tree that I'm looking at online, the viral TikTok Home Depot tree is not available in store at my Home Depot. It has got to be ordered online. So what I did was I looked at the other trees to see like how the branches are made, um, the size proportion, the fullness of it and everything, just to get an idea. But I was, I talked to Tim on the phone after I got out and I said, I am going, those trees at Home Depot that are like a, they're a different um, I think those were the Jackson fir and something else. They're not, the the one I'm looking at is the Grand Grand Duchess balsam fir. Um, and it is $50 more and it has to be purchased online. But I feel like for $50 more, I'll just be happier and it'll be the tree that I really want. So I'm, I am going to pay the extra and, um, and go the extra route of having to order it. Um, if I, if that's what I decide to do. But now I am going to shift gears, get in here to Aldi, get a few things. Um, I always think that I can get groceries and it'll last us two weeks. And I don't know why I think that because with teens in the house and I don't know, it just feels like I cannot grow, go to the grocery store once every two weeks. It's got to be every week. And then two, um, I've been making lots of donuts and doing donut orders. And so that's been taking up a lot of our baking supplies. So there's some things I've got to restock in that area. So I am heading to Aldi. I'm going to go in here. I'm going to get some groceries. Um, there's a salad that I want to make and I'm going to show you guys. It's a butternut squash salad. Um, oh, I think it sounds amazing. We got all that butternut squash. Um, so I'm, I'm going to prepare that. I don't know if it'll be on this video or not, um, but definitely we're having the baked Z for dinner tonight. And we might just do like a simple Caesar salad or something with that. So come along. Let's see what we can get at Aldi. I'm probably not going to film in there because it is so busy here. I barely got a parking spot. There is really no time that I can come to the Aldi in our area where it is not busy. So that's a good thing for Aldi, uh, but not always a great thing for me. All right. Well, we are back home. It's time to get dinner started. And tonight, like I said, we're going to make just a classic baked ziti. And I'm going to use some ricotta cheese that I had in the fridge that we need to use. And so I thought Baked Z would be a good way to use that. I've got a pound of ground beef. This is lean ground beef that I got on sale at Food Line. Um, I think y'all saw that little mini Food Line haul. Today's probably the last day that it's on sale, but it was $2.99 a pound, which I thought was great for lean ground beef. So I've got a pound of that going. We're gonna cook that. And then I've got my water heating up to boil so that we can boil our, we're calling it ziti pasta, but I could only find a rigatoni. It's just like ziti, but it's just a slightly shorter noodle. And so that will be just fine as a substitute. We'll need one pound of our ziti substitute, our rigatoni. And as soon as our water gets to boiling, we'll get that in there. And while all that's going on, I'm going to prep all the other ingredients so that we can knock this out. While we're cooking our ground beef, we're going to go ahead and season it. And we're going to season it with two teaspoons of garlic powder. One, two, and one teaspoon of Italian seasoning. We're also going to add some salt and pepper just to taste, but I'm just going to go ahead and get some salt in there, some pepper in there, and then we'll taste it later and see if we need to add more seasoned. 
<laughs> we'll cut that. Into our ground beef, we're going to add, this is some of our homemade pasta sauce. Our recipe tells us that we need 28 ounces of marinara and then we need some diced tomatoes. So I'm gonna add this pasta sauce, which is not super thick. And then I'm gonna add a store-bought jar of sauce and then also some diced tomatoes. All right, now I'm gonna add my diced tomatoes in and I'm not gonna drain those. Add those right in. I'm gonna try to break them up a little bit just cause my group doesn't like to bite in to a big chunk of tomato. They should cook down enough where nobody will know the difference there. All right, we're gonna work on the ricotta mixture while our sauce is simmering. First, we're gonna need a container of ricotta. Now I'm using the part skim ricotta and this is, let's see how many ounces, 15 ounce container. And it's just shy of two cups, but it's so close that I'm not going to buy another container to make up that other fraction of a cup. Well, I know it will be because I've had it before. All right, next we're going to add in one cup of shredded mozzarella cheese. I'm gonna add in two tablespoons of grated Parmesan cheese. Next, I'm gonna add in some parsley. You could use fresh parsley if you have it on hand. We're gonna use dried and then some dried basil also. We're gonna add one egg. And we're gonna add in some minced garlic. Or if you have fresh garlic, you can grate about a clove of garlic. That's a little bit more than I wanna put in there. That's better. And then we're just gonna set this to the side until it's time to assemble our baked ziti. And we drained our noodles and we're just gonna add this to our pasta sauce. Now, these noodles took quite the growth spurt while they were in the pot. <laughs> so they look very much like regular ziti now. I don't think anybody would ever be able to tell the difference if I did not mention it. They're probably gonna absorb all of this sauce too. I think you could eat it just like this and it would be fine without anything added to it. But I'm gonna let it cool off just a little bit so it'll be a little bit easier to handle. In fact, I'm gonna move it over here off of the burner, let it cool and then we will assemble our dish in just a minute. While we're waiting on that to cool a little bit, I have some fresh basil and fresh oregano that I got out of our little kitchen garden on the deck. Um, that we've been growing in our green stalk and it's probably in need of harvesting and putting up for the winter because I know that frost is coming. Our mornings are getting cooler and cooler. Pretty soon we'll probably be having that first frost, which we could already have had it by now, but we haven't. We got really close, but the temperature started going back up. So I don't really see it in the forecast in the next 10 days. So we'll be well into November before that happens. Maybe we'll get to use some of our produce out there a little bit more. But I'm just gonna sprinkle that on top as a garnish after we've assembled everything. All right, the first thing we do is we've got our nine by 13 baking dish here, and I'm just going to add half of our meat sauce and pasta. And I thought I could lift it, but it's a little bit more than I can handle. So I'm just going to scoop it out at first. And then when we put that last layer on, we'll probably be able to lift the bowl, or the pot, rather. All right, now it's time to add some of our ricotta. We're just gonna add half of this. It says you just kinda like add dollops on top. And then I'll probably spread that out a little bit. I need more than a nine by 13. Boy, 
I am going to definitely place this on a baking sheet just in case it bubbles over. Now we're gonna cover this with some shredded mozzarella, some shredded Parmesan, and then we're going to cover it with aluminum foil so that none of it hops out. But just in case it were to seep over the edges, like I said, I'm gonna either put a baking sheet under it or put it on a baking sheet. I might just put it on a baking sheet. Doesn't that look yummy? Oh my goodness. This will feed us all week. I hope. I say those things and then it doesn't happen. <laughs> Our oven has been preheating to 375 degrees. We're going to cover this first though with some aluminum foil, get it on a baking sheet, and then it's going to bake for about 20 minutes. We're gonna uncover it, let it bake for an additional 10 minutes. You could even broil it if you wanted to. And then when it comes out, we'll garnish it with this fresh herb. Well, dinner looks, it smells amazing. I already know that it's going to be since we've had this recipe before, but I would love for you to give it a try. And you don't have to use ground beef. You could use ground Italian sausage. I've done that before. I've also used a mixture of both. And you could probably get two dishes off of that. You can maybe make it into like two smaller bacon dishes or use some disposable pans. And like I like to do sometimes, um, if I take a meal to someone who's had surgery or a baby or a loved one has passed, I will make enough for my family and then kind of divide it out and then make another pan to take um, to someone as well. So you could even do that with this. We are definitely gonna enjoy it when my family gets home. I'm pairing it with a Caesar salad and some garlic knots, which is just like some little rolls, garlic rolls. I doubt I'll get any footage of that because by the time they get home, they are ready to eat. So I might show you what it looks like on a plate, but that will probably be about it. Well, I'm gonna leave you guys here. So until next time, remember to live simply, use what you have, enjoy the moments you've been given, and I will see you all in the next one.